I never thought I'd actually be defending something like Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball today. I mean, it's an absurd game structured around half-naked women playing volleyball featuring, um, those infamous jiggle physics. And as many have said before, and I'm looking at some specific reviews here, who would play these games if not just to ogle half-naked women? Well, here I am, a woman who has no sexual desires toward other women who played and enjoyed Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 2 for dozens of hours with focused and naive fervor. But uh, back then even, an episode of a TV show represented it strictly auditorily as women moaning, and I immediately went to its defense against my parents. It's so much more than just half-naked women, and those sound effects were entirely made up, I told them. Granted, it was the early 2000s, so I must have been 15 or so. My boyfriend at the time and I were awash in a drought of boredom, and a family member gifted him Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 2 for the Xbox 360. So for one summer, we played a lot of Extreme Beach Volleyball 2. And yes, it is absurd. Its premise is that Zack, one of the more lecherous Dead or Alive characters, purchased a tropical island and subsequently asked many of the DOA girls to visit. Some by nefarious means. I mean, he told Kasumi her presumably dead brother was waiting for her. What? What the hell, Zack? But if you can somehow get past the absurdity and admittedly slimy premise, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball is actually a relationship sim about a group of women on vacation. You play as one of the girls and to succeed, you must earn another girl's friendship to the point she will accept any gift from you. No problem at all. To do this, time must be managed effectively, mini games must be won, and gambling techniques must be acquired. Hell, thanks to Extreme Beach Volleyball 2, I began beating my poor grandmother at Blackjack. I won her an entire heart-decorated bucket of pennies. Sorry, Grandma. At the time, we took notes so we could play as effectively as possible. Who liked what? What games made the most money in the least amount of time? Was Blackjack really the best? Oh, I kind of understand why I'm on the Wikis team now. Anyway, we chose our favorite girls and earnestly checked the player's handbook that used to be included with every game. It gave us hints on the character's favorite colors, hobbies, food, and so much more. We celebrated when we were inadvertently gifted a block manch by Hitomi and knew Helena would love it. For me? Thanks. We carefully planned the time we had and diligently learned how to best play blackjack. How else would we earn enough money to purchase the Venus, the most expensive and therefore most desired swimsuit? Upon revisiting Extreme Beach Volleyball 2, not talking about 3. 3 is gross. It makes you do the gross things. Not talking about it. I discovered more unsavory activities I had entirely wiped from my memory. Candid photo snapping and butt battling? No, that was just a waste of time, as taking photos cost a time slot for no monetary or relationship gain, and butt battles cost money to play. And are also just kind of the worst. Eventually, we accomplished the feat of playing as Helena and gifting disliked swimsuits to her mortal enemy, Christy. We learned that, spoilers, Christy was actually responsible for killing Helena's mother and was after her next. And because of that, obviously, they hated each other. Developing a relationship between the two required somewhat calculated decision-making and time management, or at least it felt that way. But mostly, it was an innocent challenge with minigames set to a soundtrack of early 2000s bubblegum pop. When I booted up Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 2 in one of our glass-walled capture rooms here at IGN, I was, to be honest, pretty uncomfortable. Here I was, able to be watched by my coworkers playing a ridiculous game with TNA galore. But many of my office friends ended up actually joining and laughing with me at the ridiculousness. We made blackjack decisions together and handed off the controller in volleyball and other minigames. Yeah, we giggled like schoolgirls at the unrealistic jiggle physics, but we also shared in so much laughter on a Wednesday evening that it felt like a Friday. And if a game, not safe for work, wrapping paper and all, can make a Wednesday feel like a Friday, can't it be recognized as being, at the very least, fun?